everyone, I'm Sister Anjanet Kekana and I am here with Sister Heather Mukuna. Welcome to today's reading of Rhapsody of Realities, our daily devotional by our man of God, Pastor Chris Oyakilome. Today is Thursday the 8th of September and the title is He Guides Us Through the Word. The opening scripture is from Acts 20 verse 32 and it reads, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. Pastor says, some people have made shipwreck of their faith because they believed certain dreams and revelations they claimed came from God. In the New Testament, God doesn't lead us through dreams. He guides us through the word and the Holy Spirit. We can always depend on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us through our, through our spirits and through the word. You might be quick to ask, how about Acts chapter 2 verse 17? Doesn't it in indicate that God still leads through dreams? No, he doesn't. Dreams were for the sense knowledge generation of men. Since the Holy Spirit came, you, you don't find the apostles or anyone in the New Testament being ministered to in a dream. The Holy Spirit, nonetheless, does lead by visions and other revelations such as prophecy and inward witness and other gifts of the Spirit. However, any vision, prophecy or revelation that doesn't align with the word is not from God. It brings to mind the story of a certain sick man who had been a Christian for many years and had a vision where someone walked into the room wearing sandals and a white robe and covered with a cloud. He recounted that as he looked from the person's feet upwards to make, off, to make out his face, his face, the image suddenly spoke and said, it's not my will to heal you and disappear. Oh, wow, this is interesting. Sister Eda, what are your thoughts so far? My thoughts are the scripture that comes to mind is God seeks those that worship Him in spirit and in truth. And when He says in spirit and in truth, He speaks about the Holy Spirit. That is the Spirit that comes into us when we give our lives to Christ. And what is the truth? The Word of God is the truth. So everything that God desires for us and His will is clearly stated in the word of God. His will is made, is made manifest in the word of God because I feel that the devil can manipulate you and make you see something and make it seem like what God would say, but you have to know the word of God, which is the word of truth. So it's very important for you to know what the truth is and the truth makes you free. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Let's continue to hear about this. He immediately believed it was Jesus because he said he felt the presence of God. From then on, he believed it wasn't God's will to heal him. What made him think it was Jesus who appeared to him? Was it because the person was in a white robe? Was it because the person was covered with a cloud? Those aren't enough reasons to assume it was Jesus. If in, if in a vision, you heard a voice that tells you something that's inconsistent with the scriptures, then it's, then it's questionable. The question to ask is, does God want people well? Emphatically, yes. Read that John chapter 1 verse 2. He'll never come to you in a dream or in a vision to tell you anything contrary. He never contradicts himself. Every revelation must be subjected to the word of God. This is the reason you must study the word and know it for yourself. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wow, Sister Heather, anything to add there? Yes, the, the word of God also speaks about testing spirits. Because at the end of the day, if you do not discern, then you might be misled. But the word of truth is not that. that also, it speaks about, um, he said he felt the presence of God. You know, our emotions, our physical senses might mislead us. But the Holy Spirit will never miss this. And as a child of God, you know how to hear from the Word of God. The Word of God says, my sheep know my voice and they hear me. So when God speaks and you know it's consistent with the Word of God, that's your way out. That's your way of truth. That's your sword of the Spirit. 
So learn to listen to the Holy Spirit through your spirit, not through your feelings or emotions, because they, they can be very crazy. Let's say the let's say the prayer uh, the prayer together. Dear Father, dear Father, thank you for the immeasurable blessing. Thank you for the immeasurable blessing of your word, of your word, and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit who guides me in your perfect way. Who guides me in your perfect way? Your word is my light. Your word is my light. And I'm blessed always. And I'm blessed always. To receive the accurate guidance. To receive the accurate guidance. I need. I need. To deal wisely. To deal wisely. Enjoying my blessed life. Enjoying my blessed life. Of righteousness. Of righteousness. In Christ. In Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We trust you've been blessed by this devotional. We invite you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life by praying as thus. O oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. Hallelujah. Congratulations. You're now a child of God. If you've said this prayer and you've received God, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, please comment below and share your testimony of this special day. Thank you so much for listening to us today. And it's goodbye from us. Till next time. Bye. Bye.